Good evening, everybody. Steve Lynch here, and I want to just take a moment to thank everybody for tuning in. And I am going to give it a, a few minutes. This is a new platform that I'm going to this evening. So I'm going to give it some time for people to jump on. I'm going to share this right now um, onto different social media platforms. So just hang tight. If you, if you get on here, just wait a few minutes, you know, kind of jump in, uh, sign on, make comments in the section, in the comments section. I want everybody, this, this could be very interactive as well. I don't know if I'm going to have time for questions. We'll see about that. I'll kind of come back on this. Let me get this shared here. Hey, good evening, everybody. Steve Lynch here. I am running this special this evening on two different platforms. I was able to also get this on our Facebook Live. I'm sharing the YouTube video right now also to um, Facebook as well. You can tune in either more. I want to get people slowly over to YouTube. So I'm going to ask that you jump on YouTube, my YouTube channel tonight. But just in case, um, and again, I'm going to share this right now. So hang tight. It's going to, I'm going to give it a few minutes. I'm going to let everybody come and join us because I got a lot of information I want to go through. Um, and I have a whole outline of how we're going to do this this evening. And hopefully you can take away some information from this and go out there and make a more educated decision of who you're going to vote for in the state of Pennsylvania, specifically what's happening locally here in the Lehigh Valley. I have some feedback on that. So just everybody hang tight, make comments. Please share this. This video has to get shared, guys. It's the easiest, simplest, most, it's free. It's the way that we get this information out there. So I'm asking you, especially the YouTube link, please take the YouTube link and share it. All right, so just bear with me for a few minutes and let's get going. All right. That should be shared to Facebook. So if anybody, anybody who's on my Facebook feed right now, if you if you wouldn't mind, if you could just kind of jump out, take a look at my Facebook uh, page and see if you just saw me share the live stream uh, from YouTube. I want to make sure that they're both on there. This way we have two platforms on this evening. If we have any sound issues, we're all good. I have both my cameras and both of my setups right above and below me. Um, so if you see me kind of looking off at any at any specific moment, it's not because I'm trying to ignore you. We're working through a few things here. This is the first time I've done a, a YouTube live. And again, we're, we're going to get more uh, focused uh, with using this platform because of all the issues I've been having with Facebook. So I figured tonight would be nice, right? We're going to uh, we're going to go through information. I. I figured I'm just going to sit here, have a beer with you, and then get it, go through the breakdown of, of, of research, um, candidates that I've spoken with. Hey, Kevin, how are you, buddy? And I'll try to interact. You know, I, I don't want to lose my train of thought. Again, I have a lot of information that I want to go through. Um, I think you're going to like the outline. I'm actually going to start, um, start with the governor race and work my way down and, um, and then get, bring it into more local. And I'm going to finish it up with local and and give you a breakdown of that. But again, I, I just want to give it I just want to give it a few uh, for people to come on with us and and partake in this information. I think you're going to find it very useful. Hey Quinn, hey Beyond Citizens is in the house. Bain, I don't know that that. Um, that handle there, Jeannie, Kevin, Montessa, Bob, Christy Ann, Lori. People are jumping on Kevin. How are you this evening, guys? Again, we're going to give it, I'm going to give it to about six or seven after. And the reason for it is, you know, it's Friday night. I you know, figured it would be a nice night. It's Friday the 13th. So, you know, and what better night to do a, a voter's guide for as crazy, the crazy stuff that's happening in our country. And Friday the 13th, it just ended up being perfect that Friday the 13th 
was the week was the Friday before the election. So we're just going to roll with it. Um, and again, thank you all for joining in, uh, joining in. And I, I think, I think we're going to go, we're going to go through, well, I don't think we're going to go through quite a bit today. So, oh, and then again, guys, I'm, I need you to comment. I need you to share. The biggest thing is sharing. As I'm going through this information tonight, remember, if I tell you certain things and I say, you know, this, this is fact, this is, this is a, this candidate's position. You can take it as fact. You can go do the research, but I guarantee you, if I tell you it's fact, you're going to be able to research it. and It's going to be fact. I will also take time to tell you some of my opinions. Okay. Or feelings about a certain candidate. I will state it clearly for you. So you can't come back and say, well, you said this and this was no, I said, this was a feeling of mine for anybody that's been following me of any, with any length of time, you know, I'm as, there's no one more transparent. I put it all out there. I wear my emotions on my sleeve, the whole nine. So, um, but yeah, I got a lot, lot to get into this evening and it's at nine Oh six. We'll give it two more minutes. And then I'm going to go through an overview, just do a little bit of an introduction of why we're here this evening, and then start to talk about these candidates. And um, I'm, again, I'll, I'll give you the flow so you know exactly who we're going to address um, and uh, what, what office they're running for. I'm also going to try to give you as much information with how many candidates are still left in the race, because I can tell you uh, who just dropped out. Um, Corman dropped out again. Twice, this is the second time he dropped out uh, for governor. Um, so that's new news that's just come up within the past, I think, like forty-eight hours. So some things are changing in the field. And again, I want to do—I want to do my absolute best to just give you as inf as much information as possible. Okay. All right, nine oh seven. Let's talk. Let's talk first and foremost about tonight's layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to start with the larger races and I'm going to work. I don't want to say backwards, but down into our local races. Now, the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm also running for local rate, a local local races, actually uh, multiple different positions. I'll explain those to you as well. Uh, for those of you maybe maybe haven't tuned in. I also am going to share with you the opportunity for you to still get involved in this county to, to move toward. Great change for the for the Republican committee. It, it's not over, folks. You got four days left until the election. There's still work that can be done. There's still things you can do to get involved. Um, but as we get into these these more local races, you need to understand. I've been heavily involved in the political process in the Lehigh Valley since heavily involved. What I mean by that is really engaged in um, campaigns. And have my ear to the ground, obviously running the race that I ran last last year, which was all grassroots. Um, th this information, this feedback I'm going to give you is it's from very extensive research. It's from having conversations with these candidates. It's from getting to know many of them on a personal level. Um, you know, you're going to get a lot of really good, solid information because the source, which for in this case is me, this is what I've been doing for the past two and a half to three years. So you could take it for what it's worth. I always encourage people when you get information, I don't care who it's from. You should, it's a trust, but verify. I think Reagan's Reagan was the one that quoted that trust, but verify. It's okay to trust people, but you should never blindly trust people, myself included. I think that's the problem that we have is many people just trust without verifying. Now that's not to say once you start to establish relationships with people and they become um, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Credible in the information they're putting out. That trust level can grow more and more because you know they're putting out more and more solid, um, researchable, uh, verifiable information. And that's how you, you know you start to build discernment and things like that. So anyway, so tonight, tonight we're going to start off. Uh, the the order is going to go like this. I'm going to start off with my governor pick, the lieutenant governor pick, my senator, my senate pick. Then I'm going to get into two different state Senate races for Pennsylvania. One is with one is in my county. One is not in my county. Um, but I'm going to explain to you who, who they are and why I'm supporting them. 
I'm going to get into the state committee. Now, this is a this is an office that I'm running for with six other people on the slate. I'm going to walk you through this. And there's also, I think there's eight or nine other individuals that I'm going to really educate you on. I'm going to take you take take you through a few of these individuals. So I may go back and forth. I have notes. I, again, I want you to get as much information as possible. State committee, then the committee, which ultimately will also um, have involvement in the chairman position for, for Northampton County Republican Committee. I'm going to walk you through that as well. And then I'm going to end this, this um, voter's guide this evening with our congressional race here in district in PA District 7 between Lisa Scheller uh, in this primary and Kevin Deliker. And the reason I'm saving that one for last is I'm, I'm extremely in tune with that campaign, have been for quite some time, and I, I, I can't hold back anymore with not putting everything out there that needs to be out there to dispel a lot of lies, deceptions, slander, and defamation. And I personally am just sick of it. You may see me get more emotional as we get going into this, because as we get more, remember, as we get more to the local stuff, this is where I've been in the trenches for the past two plus years. So a lot of the stuff is very personal to me because of people that I know, um, people that have been damaged, you know, just that I care about. And I've said this before. I would I would hope, though, it didn't really happen during my election, but I would hope that if I were going through some of these things and having slander and defam, you know, defam, defamatory statements and things that made that somebody that really knew the situation well. Would be willing to come out and speak on that. Now, before I get started into these picks, I want to make a statement. I've been kind of talking about this a little bit over the past week. I, I, I want to just kind of have a heart to heart, and I wanted to have it on this first YouTube live that I'm doing. I have, by the establishment, and I'm not even talking about the Democrats, okay? I'm talking about the Republicans. The establishment has decided to paint me as a radical. Okay. Now, the only thing I'm radical for is freedom and liberty. That's it. So if if that's the definition of a radical, then I'm a, I'm a radical by definition if it's about freedom and liberty. But the way it's painted. And it's because I'm the type of person I am. I'm the type of guy that I am. The, the, the establishment does a very good job of brainwashing people. I mean, I, I can tell you, I have people that I work that worked with me during my campaign that were staunch supporters, staunch supporters. Um, with me at many different events, we became very good friends. And after the election was over, the swamp got to them, and now these people have a completely different view of who I am. Even though they 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 walked with me, talked with me, were out in the out in the, the county with me, knocking doors with me, going to events with me. So the other thing that was that's the other statement that gets made about me a lot is that this is all for publicity and this is attention seeking. And I made this, I talked about this before. If that's what you think, you know nothing about me, zero about me. I would much rather prefer to live with my family in the woods, buy a lake, land, have dogs, like, and just de dedicate my time to that. That's what I would prefer. The reason I decided to do the things that I'm doing is because I am absolutely geared up for changing things. I, we need change. And when you have change in times like this, because if, if, we're, if we're not paying attention to what has transpired over the past two years, two years that we've lived through this, I don't, <laughs> my, my, my suggestion back to you is how come you're not radical for freedom and liberty? I've made this, this statement countless times. Everything that I'm focusing on doing 
is about we the people. I'm spending the time with you this evening on a Friday night to give you as much information as I can so that you can make the best educated decisions for yourself when it comes to voting. Me personally, I'm never going to cast a vote for the lesser of two evils ever again. I won't do it. I won't do it. I refuse. I will only vote for people that have earned my vote. I'm just not going to do that anymore. And and it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that I'm, the person that I'm voting for, I'm agreeing with them on everything. Sometimes I'm voting for somebody because it's based off their character. They may be new. They may be not in politics. It's, it's a fascinating thing to listen to people talk about wanting change. And then they will have people that are coming in out of the woodwork, right? They're patriots. They've never been involved in politics before, but now they want to get involved in politics. And then they get shunned because they haven't been doing it before. And this is all coming from it within the Republican establishment. It's, 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 um, it's frustrating for sure, uh, disheartening to see these people do these type of things. But I'm going to walk you through all of this. So I just wanted to share that with you because... I just want to see this country preserved. I am not going to sit here and tell people that everything's fine. The country is not as bad off as it is. The country is heading to hell in a handbasket. And if people don't realize that at this point, you are not paying attention. And all I want to do is whatever part God puts me in to help make the change. Hopefully that makes sense. I want to thank you so far for tuning in and let, let me explain that to you. So now let me get into um, the governors. Now, from my most recent research, let me pull this up here. The candidates right now that I believe are still active on the Republican side, this is all about the Republican ticket because this is about primaries. We're not talking about the general yet. Is Doug Mastriano, Dave White, Charlie Giroux, Lou Barletta, Joe Gale. McSwain, Bill McSwain, Corman, I believe, just dropped out, like with very recently. Dr. N. Zama, I believe he's still involved. And also, I think Melissa Hart is still involved. Um, so it's still a pretty big field. And obviously, he's going to get um, lessened over the next uh, few days. And ultimately, on when we have the primary or whenever they decide to count the votes, maybe it'll be Tuesday, maybe it'll be Friday. We'll have to wait and see, of course, with that. So those are your candidates. Now, let me tell you who I'm picking, and I'm going to tell you why. Now, I'm going to make a statement here as we start this. I am not telling you that my pick is the only pick that you should do. I am not telling you that what I'm deciding is what you have to decide up and down the ticket. I am just educating you on why I'm making these specific choices. And again, it boils down to principle. And if you have some specific questions, I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, I'm going to try not to mention everybody if it's kind of not relevant to the, to the topic. But my, my pick for governor is Joe Gale. Now, some of you may or may not know who Joe Gale is. I had the opportunity to hear Joe speak at a forum that the Tea Party held a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks ago. I had heard the name. He's a Montgomery County commissioner. Yeah, he's a Montgomery County commissioner. So he's on the, you know, he's on the legislative body down there. And I think he served two terms. But why I am going to back Joe Gale in the primary is because of what this man is talking about. I have not seen a gubernatorial candidate as bold as Joe Gale. Joe Gale speaks my language when it comes to really fighting against this government. Um, I don't know if you watched the debate that he was debating in, but this moderator tried to get him to run through hoops with woke culture and all this stuff, and he just put him in his place. As a the type of person that I am, I'm basing everything off of principle and what people are willing to at least say. And then ultimately, if they haven't been in office before, if they have to do, they got to be people of action. Okay. Now, does this mean that I think all other gubernatorial candidates are bad? No. For me personally, 
I just believe Joe Gale represents what I stand for the most. And I would like to see somebody like that with those kind of stances to be sitting in the governor's mansion. There's candidates that I'm not going to state names here, but let me just give a give me let me let me tell you where I'm at with with my voting process. If you are in the government right now and you participated in a lot of the problems that are that are taking place here in this state, you're not getting my vote. If you voted for legislation, you know, I know the big things that gets talked about is Act 77. And then the argument after the fact is that it's changed. Now, I'm not denying that. But you know it was problematic when Tom Wolf is sitting there with a grin from ear to ear signing it. That's signing it before it got changed. That's number one. So these policies are bad judgments. And then the other thing that's happened through this whole COVID process, I've seen some of these candidates actually look to suspend HIPAA and give more control to the government. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I mean, I know I, me as a candidate, I know people like Joe, when I listen to Joe talk and, and how he's running, these are individuals that aren't going to think when we hit a crisis, by the way, this was a manufactured crisis over the past two and a half years, manufactured. Um, you don't have the right judgment. If you think that the government is the first, is the solution. That's the problem I have. If you're if you're going to do these types of things, and that means you believe that the government's the government's always the problem. I don't know if you haven't figured this out yet. The reason we're here today, the reason gas prices, everything that's going on, is because of the government. It's not because of Putin. Oh, you know, this administration will tell you that it's not. It's because of our government. Right? We spend just sent over 40 billion more dollars to Ukraine, and we got formula shortages down at the border, or I'm sorry, here, but down at the border, they have our formula. So if you're in the government right now and you haven't been somebody, not just through words, but through your actions, that's actually make a change, you're out for me. I believe we need a complete clean, clean sweep. And I don't want to, I'm not looking to promote somebody from sitting in office right now to another position if they haven't been doing the things that I feel are best for the country. That's the beautiful thing about America, right? We can, edu you can educate ourselves, and then we can basically make decisions off that. So, Governor, I'm supporting Joe Gale in the primary. Lieutenant Governor, I am supporting James Earl Jones. Now, let me give you a reason why I'm supporting James Earl Jones. James Jones is a very good friend of mine. James was somebody that I met during, actually, probably during 2020, the 2020 race, uh, he was a guy who was a staunch supporter of mine uh, through my campaign, and uh, he just is a very good friend. This is a, a, a businessman. He's a, got international business experience. He does not come from the political class. Um, he's a man of integrity, a man of character, and I believe we need to have that in that specific position. And again, this does not mean other candidates aren't good. I'm not saying that saying for me, because of the personal relationship that I have with James Earl Jones, that man is getting my vote. And I firmly believe that when he gets to, to Harrisburg, he will do an absolute bang-up job as lieutenant governor for the state of Pennsylvania. So for lieutenant governor, my pick is James Earl Jones. Now, Senate, Kathy Barnett. Now, I posted some stuff earlier today Kathy Barnett is in debates talking about the stature, or I should, yeah, I guess stature of the two candidates that are on the World Economic Forum. Now, if you don't know much about me, these types of things are major buzz, buzzwords for me because I've been recent. You have to understand, since 9 11, I'm 44, I just turned 44 on Sunday. Since 9 11, I have been looking at this government with a microscope. Okay. So over 20 years. I have been paying attention to the movements of this government. See, all that's happening now, I, I'm not shocked about because I knew things like this were coming because I've been paying attention for two decades. 
Kathy Barnett brings up the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. The woman's been out there. I watched her when she ran for Congress. I've never heard her talk about racism the way that they portrayed it. At all this stuff. And also, I shared a podcast from earlier that Kathy was on after this whole... And you have to understand something. Hannity is a punk, number one. He's a punk. And he's a big Oz supporter. He's, such, he's all up in Oz's business. I wouldn't be surprised if Hannity and Trump, because Trump endorsed Oz, were on the phone like, yo, bury this, bury this woman. You do know that Hannity had on every single single senator candidate throughout the week, and they all bashed Kathy Barnett, and she wouldn't put him on, or he wouldn't put her on. And I have the the, con the conversation that she had shared to prove that she'd been asking. I think seven times she said that she asked to get on there after he decided to endorse us. And if you go back and watch Hannity talk to Kathy Barnett before Oz jumped in the race, he was singing her praise. So this whole vetting process. And you have to understand the type of campaign I went through with the negative mudslinging all month after month after month. I'm all too familiar with how it looks with these smear campaigns and what's being done. And this is by McCormick and Oz, who those two people would never get my vote, especially Dr. Oz. You can go back to, you can go back to, uh, uh, Jersey and go hang out with Marina Abramovich and Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey, pal. Get out of my state. So Oz, no. Kathy Barnett, absolutely 100%. Yes. Now, I have two state Senate races that I'd like to discuss. One is for PA uh, 14th District. Oh, and also, too, I want to make a comment because I'm going to tie this in a little bit later when I get into this group of people. Let me show your pictures real quick. Okay. This group of people. The lieutenant governor. I'm going to talk about Mr. John Brown. John Brown, who was our executive at one point, and then he became council person, couldn't, you know, didn't didn't have, like his job enough. And now he wants to run for lieutenant governor. I think he was also running for mayor. This guy thinks he's going to save the world. He doesn't focus on the job at hand. I'm going to talk about him a little bit later as we get into the state committee. He thinks he needs to run for every other specific position. The voters put you in to be a council person. He doesn't show up to work all the time. I've been to multiple meetings where he either showed up late, didn't show up at all, or left early. So I'm gonna, when I get into these state committee people and who they really are, I hope to educate you on what you have happening in this county. And you're gonna, you, It should be eye-opening to you. So the 14th district, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about who I'm supporting, number one. Omi Maldonado. Omi's got a really good shot of winning this thing. The man's former military. He's got a beautiful family. I've met him. He was a big supporter of mine during 21. I've known him for quite some time. Uh, he's a man of integrity. You know, then you you uh, you contrast that against a, a woman like Cindy Miller. And I'm going to get into describing to you how it all ties in with your chairwoman of the NCRC and how that whole leadership is cancer. But let's talk about Cindy Miller, for, for example, not to take any, anything away. In fact, no, I'll wait to talk about Cindy Miller, but you're going to learn about how that, that individual is involved in a lawsuit for her um, uh, vandalism of property that wasn't hers. We'll get into that. So you see those Cindy Miller signs, you're about to learn about that, that, that candidate right there. You don't want nothing to do with her. Now in PA, uh, the 16th, district for the state Senate seat, you have Pat Brown, the incumbent, the 26-year politician against Jarrett Coleman. Jarrett Coleman is a phenomenal patriot. He became a school board member, and he has been fighting for parents' rights, kids' rights, and he is going to make an absolute incredible state Senate senator. And I also heard that his race was, was in the margin of error today. So like three or four points divided between them, which is just absolutely amazing because uh, you know, you have to understand how these incumbents have money, but a lot of people are where I'm at. They're like, I'm not casting votes for these people anymore. Just not doing it. I'm not doing lesser of two evils. So Jarrett Coleman, this is not in my, I can't vote for him. Omi, I can. Omi's, Omi will be my state senator and he's absolutely going to win. Get out there and make sure you cast votes for Omi and Jarrett if you're in Lehigh County and you're specifically in the 16th Senate seat. I want to get into state committee. 
I'm going to talk about these people right here. I'm going to talk about them in depth. This is your, it's your, I love, I don't, where do I go? The NCRC, the real team. This is the real team according to these individuals here. I'm going to, I'm going to focus in on three individuals so you can have an, you can have an understanding of who these people are, how they behave, and it, just how power hungry they are. And they should, you should want them nowhere near your government apparatus in any way. You shouldn't want them on committees, nothing. We're going to discuss Beverly Hernandez, John Brown, and then the chairperson, Gloria Lee Snover. That's the biggest one you're going to want to avoid. But these individuals here, where do I start? Let's talk about, well, I've already talked about John Brown. This guy thinks that, you know, he needs to be sitting on everything and running for every specific office, but yet doesn't do the full job of the one thing that he has and shows up on time for everything or there when he should be and they're late. So that's that's that there. there. Beverly Hernandez, let's talk about this, this, this individual. This is the individual, by the way, that made the claim that I was involved in witchcraft. I mean, a total loon, um, which is like absolutely insanity. So... But I'm going to give you something a little bit more, you know, cutting right to the heart of the matter. And I'm going to take you back to, this would have been, I think it was during, it would have been during a 2020 race. Lisa Scheller was at a, uh, like a, an, a, a, an event that was a fair. It was a fair. She's out there. We, we were all doing this kind of stuff. You're out there. You're, you're meeting with people. You're talking with people. Lisa had a really good conversation with a constituent. Conversation went great. The woman was going to support her. And then she's out talking to other people. Within 10 minutes, the same candidate, the same the constituent comes back to Lisa. I can't. I can't support you. I can't vote for you. Lisa obviously sitting there shocked. Like, well, why? What happened? What changed? You Donate to Planned Parenthood. Lisa look, which is a total boldface lie. Lisa looks at her and says, "That's that's absurd. I, I, I've never done that. Who, who told you that?" Woman turns around, points right to Beverly Hernandez. That woman told me that. And you're what I'm going to go through, you know, just a little bit when I get into the congressional race. You're going to see a pattern of who these people are. And right now, their ringleader is this Kevin Delicker guy. And I'm going to give you facts on who this guy is. So that's her. Gloria Lee Snover. And here, I'm going to, I said I want to go back to Cindy Miller. Let's talk about a few things. And I want you to put yourself in a position where you're the chairperson of the Republican committee in the county. In a meeting, there was a lawsuit that was taking place because Nicole Romanishan, who was running for uh, county council at the time, um, had a lawsuit filed against Cindy Miller, Lee Snover, and at that time it was Jerry Pritchard. There was three of them. But here's a fascinating thing. An individual got up in the meeting to get into the discussion about, because what ended up happening was somebody at the time before she decided to publicly admit it, was crossing out Nicole's name on her palm card, by the way which they found out she touched about a 1,000 of them. Nicole lost the race by 32 votes. 32, she touched a 1,000. Scribbled her name out, and when people were coming into the polls, she was telling them that she was not running. She was off the ballot. This is an individual that's running for state senate. When it was brought up that people were doing that, Cindy Miller stood up in the meeting and with pride. I did it. That's me. I did it. So just so you know, with these, with these people, what these people think of you is they think that you don't know better because she decided to take your vote away. Because let's not forget, the primary is for, let's say you have three people running for a specific position. The primary is for the Republicans or Democrats, it doesn't matter what party it is, to come together and vote for whoever they want, and whoever comes out the victor, that committee is supposed to get behind that person 100% and bring them across the finish line. Now, our committee, what they do is they work against the candidates, cross out names, 
They run around the different polls, tell them, well, these people are radical. This is this one's not on the poll. That's what our committee does, not the Democrats, led by Lee Snover. And I'll send, I'll put a picture in uh, maybe the Facebook feed later so you can see her standing behind Oz at the Trump rally, waving her Oz flag. You know, the big, the biggest rhino we got on the ticket right now. Her and her husband are out there supporting, like, yeah, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. So that's the type of people that run this committee. And if, look, here's what I would say with state committee and specifically the chairwoman right now. If you like the way things are run in this county, which if, if you ever uh, either were involved in a campaign or became a candidate yourself, uh, unless they've decided to, to, to anoint you, your, your answer is going to be like, no, they're, they're, they're absolutely the worst people to deal with. These are the same people that are calling themselves the new real team so you're going to see these names on the ballot, of which I believe there's going to be 18. So let me tell you who you should be voting for if you want patriots. I am running for state committee, along with six other candidates. Linda Stubitz, Katharina Morea, Melly Hyland, Andrew Azon, Annette Kuyan, Richard Morea, and myself. The state committee, now, of course, you have to be a Northampton County resident. The state committee race, you can vote for seven. If you don't have these, I can get these to you. These are something you can take right into the poll. When you go to the state committee, you can see them. I'm going to be out on election day and also handing these out. I'll be out all down election day. But this is critical because the state committee is your voice in Washington. It, it, they, take, they take votes on leadership and stuff like that. Well, in the back... You're going to see this is for candidates running for committee. Now, how does this work? When you go into the polls on Tuesday, you're going to see you're going to, the, the ballot's insane. I mean, there's so many people running. It's going to be very confusing. So that's why I wanted to do this video because you're going to see lots of names. You know, typically when you go in to vote, you don't think you're going to vote for seven people. You're going to see 18 at least in that section to vote. It can be very confusing. It can be a daunting task to try to process what exactly you should do. What we decided to do was put together a slate of seven so that you'd have patriots that would be running. So I would just encourage you to vote for all seven right down the line. Okay. This vote, you're going to see at the bottom of your ballot, like in my precinct, myself and my wife are on for committee. Why is that important? Well, after the primary, you're going to have a reorganization meeting for your county party, the county committee. And that's going to typically be like 30 days after the primary, so somewhere in the end, mid, mid to end of June. Every person who becomes a committee member gets a vote on leadership. I'll be running for chairman of that position, of that committee. Every one of these votes counts. If you're someone that wants to get involved and you're in a precinct, we can also teach you how to write yourself in and how you can do a small campaign on that. You may be able to win with like 15, 20 votes and boom, if, if there's no one in your precinct, and then we're going to be able to have an extra vote to really change up this county party. So that's that there. Now I want to end on, um, I want to end on this congressional race. I'm going to just stay as calm as possible. And the reason I say that is because uh, I know Lisa, I've known Lisa for, for many years. I, I met Lisa just professionally. I, I professionally knew her. I knew her before she was running for office. Uh, this is an individual that is authentic. This is an individual that does a lot of philanthropic work. Um, her business is, is incredible. She's a, she's a phenomenal candidate. And I've had to watch through two different campaigns in 2020 and 2022, the Republicans, and specifically this one, specifically Kevin Delacker. No platform. The entire time that this campaign has been going, you can't find one negative statement, negative mailer, negative ad from Lisa to Kevin. But what you can find is nothing but slander, defamation, and straight-up lies from the Delacre camp about Lisa. 
The guy doesn't have a platform. He doesn't have a platform. His platform was destroy her character. That's his platform. That's been it. Every time I've heard this guy speak, it's only been about Lisa, China Lisa, this, this, and that. That's all, that's all it's about. No platform whatsoever. I'm going to give you some, two things right now. So let's get into, so I've given you all the reasons why. And so Lisa Scheller is my pick for PA District 7. But I'm going to expose many things on Kevin Delifer right now because I'm sick. I'm just sick of him and sick of his people lying, spewing hatred. I just, I'm sick of it. So let's go to, let's go to this. I'm going to take you through what happened in churches during the petition signing period. Kevin and his people are in churches telling people to sign his petition. And if they were to sign Lisa's petition, if she gets into office and she's going to sign legislation that's going to codify abortion up until the moment of birth. This is a bold face lie. We know it to be fact, and I'm not going to give the person's name, but I can tell you the, the ramifications of what happened because it was proven. An individual was approached that the that these people from this camp this campaign didn't know was a close friend of Lisa and told her and the leadership exactly what happened, which ultimately led to, because Kevin was supposed to have another event with these churches, which got canceled because was he doing? And this is a man who claims himself to be a minister. Him and his people are inside of God's house of worship, bearing false witness against your neighbor. See, for me, that ends it right there. And it should for every human being if you operate from more a place of morals and ethics, but some it doesn't. So let's go further. A couple of weeks ago, uh, both Lisa and Kevin were at a march. It was a, it was a march for life. It was a, a pro um, culture of life. I forget the name of the place. I talked to Lisa about it. She said it was a really amazing place. They're doing a walk. They're doing a walk. And there's a witness to this as well. Lisa's walking. She's out there just talking with people. This guy comes up and verbally accosts her because it was shortly after his debate. He, he, he knew he lost, and he was he was accosting her about her stances and, and, and the things that were stated in the um, debate. Totally inappropriate and made a scene because that's the kind of person he is. His supporters don't want to acknowledge that, which is fine, but I'm not going to let this go unsaid anymore because this individual is a menace, and he's a liar, and he should be called out on it. Now, I'm going to get into some other stuff, too, about his business. And, and personally, if he's got great success, fantastic. But the problem is Kevin Delicker likes to come out and rail on success and complain about Lisa's success and claim that she's this, this, and that because of her success. So when I make these statements about his quote-unquote success, Please understand, I'm not the one that criticizes. Right, Hoke, thank you. Who posted that? It might have been Barry. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was Bright Hope. That was the, the Walk for Life thing. It was a phenomenal organization. But this guy, so you have to understand tactics. This guy likes to use tactics that he thinks are buzzwords for people's ears, but there's no meat behind it. So, all right. Kevin Delacre claims he's not rich, but he owns a, owns a farm. That's valued between one to five million dollars. Interesting. Do you know that he raises taxes on people by leasing his farm for free and harvesting the clean and green tax credits? Go look it up. Go look it up. Kevin Delacre claims he's not rich, but he talks about the over two hundred and fifty million dollars he's of systems he has installed. So again, if that's all true, good for you, pal. But then you're going to come out and rail against success and it gets better. Let's talk about some other things here. He also says that he does not use consultants. But did you happen to know that he, he uses Charlie Dent's campaign manager, Sam Chen? You can go look that up on the finance report. Kevin Delker claims he isn't self-funded. 
but nearly half of what he has raised is his own money. In the past quarter, Kevin raised $32,000, while Lisa raised over $410,000. And of that $410,000, you want to know how much came from Lisa's pocket? Zero. Who's the serious candidate? <clears throat> oh, and then the quarter before that. So now we're not talking about just this previous quarter. The quarter before that. And this is when he was really going on and on about self-funding. He's kind of been quiet about it as of late because he, I don't know if he realized he was smart enough to realize it. Uh, being a self-funder, well, he, this, he claimed over 50% of his money came from his own funds during that previous quarter, a much higher percentage than Lisa's during that quarter. So who's the self-funder? That's right, lies. Here's a good one. Kevin Delegar claims to be a conservative, but he worked for nearly four years for Tom Ridge. Do you know that Tom Ridge is a never-Trumper who supported amnesty? Pension increases. Pension increases went up under Delegar's uh, being a financial or whatever, economic advisor. And by the way, Tom Ridge is pro-abortion. Oh, that's interesting because um, isn't that Kevin's, you know, how could he work with somebody that was pro-abortion when he's so staunchly against anything that has anything to do with abortion? And let's talk about some walkbacks that uh, Kevin did during the debate. During the debate, there was a question asked. And you could, again, Folks, look at who will tell you the truth right off the get-go, and then look who will change up their answers when they realize how the room reacted. They were asked the question, exceptions, rape and incest. Kevin Delacker answered, no. Lisa answered, yes. The room, when he answered no to that, there was like a gasp. Like, are you serious? You're going to make that statement? Before the next question could be had, he he's like, "Oh, I want to, I want to rephrase my, I want to rephrase my answer." You know, you you asked about exceptions, and then his answer was, "Well, if it's the only thing that'll get the bill through, then I'm okay with exceptions." That's a sleazy politician, right there. And if you can't identify that at this point, folks, I don't know what else to tell you. That sleaze right there. He felt the temperature of the room, realized that answer was a no go, and he walked it back. So that's what you want. If you, if you want that, because if that's what you want, there's your candidate. Because Lisa, that's not your candidate. Lisa's going to always tell you, she'll listen to you. It's not always going to agree. I've watched this woman. She listens to people and takes it to heart. This guy. Kevin claims to offer himself to the pe people of Pennsylvania. Yet, he tried to push through legislation in Pennsylvania to the tune of $4.5 billion that would have created government contracts to benefit his own business. You can go look that up. You're going to love this one. Kevin Delker claims his business helps improve education, yet the schools he's worked with in New Jersey have some of the worst records in the country. Good track record. Kevin Delacroix claims to be a conservative, but his business helps the New Jersey teachers unions by creating remote learning so the children are not in the classroom. You need to understand something. That's what his business is. These schools, by the way, they teach CRT. So his business model is predicated on you staying home to be able to be able to use his product and primarily in those schools out there that are teaching CRT, which gives you less control as a parent. Good stuff. You know, and it's interesting when I've gone through this and I actually looked at the man makes his living off taxpayers. Yeah. Now, I want you to think about something. He likes to talk about conflicts and you wouldn't be able to stand up and you wouldn't be able to do this and that. This man's primary business is involved with government contracts in schools. Look it up. So you go down to D.C. and we're supposed to just trust you that you don't have any kind of vested interest and you're not going to try to gain the system, gain the system. To get contracts, we already know you did it in Pennsylvania the, to, the, to the tune of 4.5 billion. Yeah, real conservative right there. Finally, and finally, in the debate, you know who is not committed? And this will just show you right now. This is the, I'm taking my ball and going home. When asked the question, yes or no, then the moderator kept he was, I was actually it was a good job because he wouldn't answer it. Yes or no. Will you support the winner of the Republican primary for the general election? He won't answer it. Lisa said unequivocally, yes, because 
anything that's uh, uh, not getting that Republican in office is a vote for Susan Wilde. See, that's the right answer, especially with someone as bad as Susan Wilde. Nope. What Kevin's going to do is he's going to take his ball, he's going to go home, and I want you to think about this now, people. Do you honestly think that his people, him and his people, are going to do the right thing when I give you all the information I just gave you tonight with the way that they behave? And there's your ringleader, this ringleader of Kevin Delicker with, the, with this group and what they're doing, lies, everything else. So that hope, hopefully that gives you some insight into this person as a human being because I'm sick and tired of listening to him on his high and mighty horse, tearing down somebody else that's dedicated millions of her do millions of the dollars of her money to helping underprivileged youth with education, started Hope and Coffee, which puts addicts in early recovery back into the work workforce. So they have a line item on their, on their resume, can get back out there and, and, and make something of themselves because of, of her own struggles with, with addiction that she that broke 40 years ago? Or how about somebody that runs an international business of, of by which she's the only female CEO in the world of the type of business that that is? And yet we're going to attack her character? This individual with, go look all the stuff up that I just told you and then come back and prove me, that, tell me that I'm wrong. This is the type of individual that's going to go out there and slander and 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 try to ruin someone's good name. I, I don't. That doesn't fly by me. So, in recap, Governor for me, Joe Gale, Lieutenant Governor James Earl Jones, Senator Kathy Barnett, and I'm going to encourage you to go watch the podcast that I shared earlier, so you can hear from Kathy's mouth herself. What a what a twist job they did on that. And Hannity's, Hannity is disgusting. He should be ashamed of himself, but he's not. He's not. Uh, state senators in the 14th district, Omi Maldonado. He's in Northampton County. In the 16th uh, district, Jared Coleman. He's in Lehigh County. State committee, you have the seven that I was telling you here. Linda Stubitz, Katharina Morea, Andrew Azon, Annette Kuyan. Richard Morea and myself, Steve Lynch, you're going to see us on um, amongst amongst like 18 other names. On the backside with committee, like I said, there's going to be two. You also may see nothing down there, and I can talk to you about writing in because we need those additional votes, okay? So that's going to be state committee and committee. And then, of course, for Pennsylvania Congressional uh, District uh, 7, Lisa Scheller. So I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm going to see if I uh, maybe get some questions. James Jones. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, just want to see if there's any questions. Maybe uh, I can hop hop into because I, I if there's anything I can help with, I will try. Club for Growth back in Kathy Barnett. Club for Growth is a never Trumper group. I mean, I can't I can't answer that. I can't answer that. I. I, I I, I have no idea. Go look, go, go do some research into that. Um, and, and here's something else I would say, folks, when you're voting for people, I hope you understand you're never going to agree with a candidate all the time. You do understand that, right? I really hope you understand it. If you're looking for the perfect candidate, you're never, you, then you'll never vote. You should, you'll, you'll probably never vote. There is no perfect candidate. You're going to have some things. That's why I always talk about character principles. Those things are what should matter most. Because if a person's got solid character and principles, they may not vote identically with you. But, you know, if they got character and principles and also they're, they're true patriotic Americans, they're going to uphold and defend the Constitution. Those are the, pro those are the biggest, most important things. So I hope this was helpful. Um, I really do hope this was helpful. I, I enjoy putting this information together for you and wanted you to be able to have a good reference that you could go to the polls with. I, I do hope this gave you some further information, again, with some of the candidates. Maybe you didn't know. Uh, maybe you didn't know certain candidates that I mentioned. Maybe you didn't know about the state committee races uh, You know that's that's going on and what's going to be happening here in the county and, and so forth. Um, so why not Zama? I love Dr. Zama as a man. Uh, as He's a great great man. And I think he's a phenomenal man. 
my concern is in 2018, he gave $1,000 to Kamala Harris, or no, 2019 for the 2020 election. He gave $1,000 to Kamala Harris's campaign. And this is public record, so I'm not, it, it came out before anyway. I've known about this for months, known about it for months. I, 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 that's a bad, it's just a, a really error in judgment. I, I, I hope Dr. Zama finds some kind of opportunity in the administration. He should be so involved on the health and the health side of things. He was somebody that I wanted to have come in with Graysdale as a consultant. He's brilliant. And as, again, as a man, I just, to me, that was one thing that, um, I couldn't get past. I couldn't get past. So that's, that's the answer for that. That's the answer for that. Um, anybody else have any questions? Let's see. I do. I do like Doug. Not perfect. I've met, listen. I've met Doug countless times. Shook in his hand. Had pictures with him. As a man, I've met him. He's a he's a good guy. I, I don't have any personal um, vendetta with him. I think he lacks judgment. I I think anybody that voted for Act seventy seven lacks judgment. But my bigger concern was what he did, what he said about HIPAA and suspending HIPAA. Those are bad judgment calls. For me, you don't have the mindset that's correct to run a state, especially living through what we just lived through for the last two years. The government is never the answer. It's the problem. So that's my stance on him. I'd, I'd go out and have a beer with him and sit down and have a dinner with him. I've, I, there's nothing personal. I have against Doug. I think he's a good guy. I respect him for his military service. But we're just because you're military doesn't mean you're the right person for the job. That's a fact. I love and respect our military. But I got to tell you something. I've seen many military people that run for office that they should have just stuck with their military because they're horrible in office. Horrible. And I'm not saying that about Doug. I'm just I'm just talking in general. So uh Carla Sands, well, she's running for Senate, obviously, as well. I actually met Carla. I like her. I like her, I like her stances, the things that she's talked about. Um, I'm not, I just, I think Kathy Barnett is very strong. And again, when you're up, when you're willing to win a debate, have discussions on the World Economic Forum, tell me the last time a senator candidate talked about the World Economic Forum. I do not think all the allegations are true. Go watch that. Go watch that podcast, and you're gonna you, you're gonna think the same. This is right from Kathy's mouth. Uh, I shared it earlier today, so I encourage anybody that saw this. It's a hit piece. I know this well. It's a hit piece. They took things out of context. She was even when she was describing what she was talking about with the Black Lives Matter, uh, Black Lives Matter, and the prote protesting and marching with them. She goes, "If you let the statement finish, I was talking about." Yes, if it was peaceful and they were out there and what happened with George Floyd and we were out there doing things to just go march in solidarity with that, she goes, I would have been out there with you. They, that's where they cut it. She then goes on to say that, but what it turned into was absolutely nothing I could support. And there you have it. That's the media for you. And look, when... Something like this comes up. You, oh, oh, she wasn't properly vetted by the people, Hannity says, and this isn't that. Six, she's been out running for years. Properly vetted? Oh, maybe by you. Oh, wait, no, that's right. You liked her until Oz got in. So I don't. I do not think that those allegations are true based off of what I've been able to witness. And I, I, I was almost going to come on tonight and say I wasn't sure on the senator's side because I didn't get a chance to go and really do research. But someone shared with me. In fact, it was Tabitha, a good friend of mine, Tabitha. She shared that podcast. And when I had the opportunity, I was driving back from work and I was listening to that podcast. I was like, nope, this is a total hit piece. Um, see if, let me see if I can. Right. Oh, Pride right. Hope. Okay, good. Wow, great, guys. A ton of people tuned in. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to see if I can answer any other questions, and then I'll get going. You guys have been great. Thoughts on 2,000 mules. You know, it's interesting. Thank you for asking that question. I didn't watch it yet, and I have it on purpose. Uh, I'm going to probably watch it this weekend. I wanted to wait. I wanted to see what the reaction was. Uh, from what I can see, I've seen some clips of it. What do I? Here's what I – from the clips of it. You have to understand, I've already – 
the, the 2020 election, and I do not believe that the 2020 election is where it all started. I believe that they have been messing with our election process for decades. So that's number one. 20, uh, uh, yeah, exactly what? No, I did it on purpose. I actually did it on purpose this time. I'm going to love the. I'm going to love the movie. My, my week was real busy. I wanted to watch it over the weekend, so I'm going to watch it this weekend. But truth be told, I don't need to see it. I don't need to see it. I don't believe that the 2020 election was legitimate in any way, shape, or form. But if you go to the 2000 Mules movie, you start to realize that these down-ballot elections that were taking place, these down-ballots, this, is, this did not stop at the presidential race. It did not. That race, that election was so screwed up. 81 million votes. I don't, I don't want to get on that, Joe Biden. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it, I've seen the clips of it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but I wanted to be able to sit down and give it my undivided attention. So I'm going to be watching it this weekend. So yeah, thanks for that. I I, I had I was going to do a review on that. That may actually be my next podcast. I'm going to do a review on 2000 Mules. I already had it in, in the works. My schedule has been a little bit different, folks. I'm not on as much. It's not because I, I love coming and communicating with you, but I just, I've been very, my schedule's changed quite a bit. So it's just uh, not, not had the same kind of opportunity to do that. But yeah, I'll do a I'll do a review on that on that movie. But um, so yeah, let me see if there's anything else. Absolutely, my pleasure to give you the information. And again, go do your research and and you know figure some things out, guys. Uh, make sure it never happens again. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. Yeah, the police. <laughs> that's a I'll tell you that's a video for another time. I'm gonna hop off here. Thank you, you know, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful. I hope it provided some some feedback and information for that that uh, that will help you make some decisions when you go into vote. I ask I ask everybody, please share this, share the YouTube video, and share the Facebook Live. Uh, this is how we get this information out there, and I want people to really know what's happening in this county and in this district because there's a specific campaign that's that's being run right now. And, and these people are just, they're just not good people. And they're running. When are we going to start to put in people that have ethics? How can you allow an individual get away with vandalizing materials losing a seat for the party that you're supposed to represent. And then the following two weeks later at the Lincoln day breakfast, you stand her up nice and proud. She's going to write front for state Senate. I, I almost fell out on my seat. It, it's it, folks, the power structure. They think they don't have anybody to answer to, but themselves. I'm asking you this election, help get me help get these candidates on state committee, help get the committee members so that we have a majority, so that I can get in there as your chairperson and run this party the way it should be run. It's a party of by and for the people. The party right now, they talk about closing off meetings because they don't like the way they're talked to. Does that sound like free speech to you? By the way, it's not Democrats, it's Republicans. This is the Republican committee. They lie. They lie constantly. These people just lie. What and we get, we have to have enough, folks. You have to have enough. Get a gut full of these people and get out there and vote different. Look, take a look at these faces. Don't vote for these people. If you want everything to stay the same and not change, there's your ticket. If you want sorry, I this. Change in this, there's your ticket. It's really that simple. You can go with the old guard that lies about being the new guard. How do you, how are you the new when you've been in power? Love you guys. Thank, thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this everywhere. And uh, let's make this happen. Get out. We got, we need poll watchers. We need workers. If you want to volunteer, let's, let's get connected. we got a lot of work still left to do folks. I can tell you there's, there's a lot that can be done in these last uh, few, few days. To make to make or break it make or break an election. So if you want to help out, let us know. We love you. Talk to you soon.